Coming up on Valley News Live at 10, shoplifters get away with merchandise from the Kohl's department store this morning. And a kid gets his prized possession back after a bully steals it from him. Plus, a Red River Dairy closes its doors, leaving some in the FM area scrambling. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Larson. The snow is coming to an end for some in the valley, but summer is here now with more on what we can expect for tonight. Summer. Thank you so much, Alex. It's kind of a snow globe type scene today with the big, fat, fluffy flakes, as I like to call them, and very little wind. However, it did lead to some areas of several inches of accumulation and, of course, those icy roads as well. The snow is out of here, but our next round already on our heels. We'll get to that in just a minute. But first, we need to contend with temperatures turning very cold through the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. We're looking at around 17 degrees below zero tomorrow. And Alex, tomorrow is a first alert weather day. We have more cold to talk about all in just a few minutes. Awesome. Well, thank you, Summer. A Moorhead boy was left heartbroken after his prized possession, an autographed WWE belt, was stolen from him at school. But with some help, he was able to get it back. He invited me to his birthday party to learn more. Put an autograph right here. Eight-year-old Montague Atchison may be the world's biggest WWE fan. I brought it out to school, and when I came back, it was gone. He wasn't supposed to bring it to school, but he wanted to prove the bullies wrong. He was being bullied, and so he wanted to, because the kids didn't believe him that he went to the uh, event, the WWE event, and they didn't believe him that he got it autographed. And so to prove a point, he took it to school. When Montague got home, he had to tell his mom. I was kind of nervous. He was crying when he told me, but then, so I went to talk to the teacher and the school made sure that they looked at the cameras and through social media also from everybody, you know, making shares. Christine created a Facebook post to find her son's belt. The post got over 600 shares. They seen how important it was to him because it was really yeah. important to him, or it is important to him. And the next day, the belt was returned. Really good. I feel really good about it. It was amazing. The uh, community really pulled together for him, and that was really great how everybody was just kind of wanting him to get that belt back. Then Christine sat down with the assistant principal to talk about what her son is being bullied about. And then so they're going to address it in school, and they're possibly going to read a book that addresses Native American boys with long hair and how it's okay. The local group Below Zero Wrestling saw the post and offered to do a meet and greet with Montague. This morning, shoplifters walked away with merchandise from the Kohl's department store on 13th Avenue. Fargo PD officers were dispatched to the store shortly before 8, 1130 this morning. A tipster told Valley News Live shoplifters were seen frantically throwing clothes from a Kohl's cart and into a vehicle. The vehicle was parked in the alley of the back of the building. It's unclear how much the shoplifters got away with, but stay with Valley News Live as this story develops. Red River Dairy in West Fargo has permanently shut its doors. Owner Mike Mertens told Valley News Live he made the decision Friday to cease operations at both the Fargo and Devil's Lake locations. He cited workforce shortages. Mertens has expressed he is beside himself for what he had to do. But Red River Dairy's closure has left some in the FM area scrambling. A whistleblower from an area hotel shared with VNL that they were out of milk for the week and had to re resort to buying from the store. According to Mertens, the Mayville location remains open under new ownership. More than 63% of Americans are fully vaccinated, according to the Centers for, the, for Disease Control and Prevention. And the Omicron variant has shown to cause less severe illness than the Delta version. But health officials stress the virus still poses a threat. John Lawrence reports. COVID-19 has been a dominant factor in everyday life for the past two years, ranging from mask wearing in public to lengthy hospital stays. But some health officials say that might change in the not too distant future. We see fewer and fewer people who have never dealt with one form or another of the virus that causes COVID before. And because of that, we're seeing a lot less severe illness, a lot fewer deaths per infection. 
The number of confirmed cases versus hospitalizations in the U.S. has also dropped since November, according to data from Johns Hopkins University and the Department of Health and Human Services. We have so many more tools now compared to 2020 or 2021, and we are also dealing with, thankfully, a milder variant with the Omicron variant. Among those tools, booster shots, which one CDC study found are 90% effective at preventing hospitalizations. We're talking about somewhere between a cold and the flu is where Omicron falls if you are vaccinated and boosted. Doctors say the bottom line remains. The sooner more people get vaccinated, the sooner the world can get the upper hand on the pandemic. People have just chosen not to be vaccinated, and, and that's their choice. And we will continue to provide their care. But the ones who are not vaccinated are the ones who are flocking to the hospitals right now. And that's creating the problem. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Food and Drug Administration has extended the use of the antiviral remdesivir for treatment of mild to moderate COVID-19. The medication had received emergency use authorization in May of 2020, but it was only for use in people hospitalized with severe COVID. In October of that year, it was approved for anyone 12 and older who was hospitalized. Yesterday, the agency expanded the use to include everyone who tests positive for the disease, not hospitalized and has mild to moderate symptoms or is at high risk of severe illness. The housing market across the U.S. is still being heavily impacted by the pandemic. From lumber prices to inflation and the market continues to be a roller coaster. Valley News team's Aaron Walling spoke with a consultant on what people can expect of the housing market right here in the FM area. The housing market has had many twists and turns during the COVID-19 pandemic, from lumber prices skyrocketing to interest rates on loans dropping to new lows. It's inevitable that we have to obviously pay the prices that are you know, being asked of us, so it is intimidating having to then increase the prices of our homes in response to that. However, Jessica Janu and those at Verity Homes are forecasting that those interest rates could increase here in the near future. Some in the community are on the fence when it comes to buying a home, especially with the inflation hikes. The question becomes, should you wait or go for it when buying a home? That's a huge topic of conversation and I get asked that all the time, you know, should I wait? Should we wait to kind of see what the market does? At this point, um, I mean, we know at this point that we're going to expect those interest rate increases. And like I said, I don't expect the prices of homes to go down anytime soon. So if somebody's really interested in purchasing a home, I highly recommend consulting with a lender at this point. And with worries about the market following the crash in 2008, some are concerned about going for it. Janu doesn't foresee that happening. I think that people are a little concerned that history tends to repeat itself, but at this point, um, at least in our market, we don't foresee that happening at this point. So that's nothing that I would worry about as of right now. In Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. Later on Valley News Live at 10, fewer Americans are seeking college degrees. And Tomorrow is a first alert weather day. You can get your forecast right now for free on the Valley News Live weather app or in just a couple minutes after the break.